G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I've got this rifle in front of us because what I actually want to go through is a problem I banged into this last week, or with this last week, which was a blown primer. Um, and I wanted to, I suppose there's lots of people who made suggestions as to how to fix the problem. Um, so thank you very much. Um, uh, it also showed me there's a bit of, uh, not a full understanding of what's going on back there. So I wanted to go through that in a brief video to try and help explain a little bit of that sort of stuff. And the other bit I want to touch on is this little mark on my forehead is just simply me fighting with a car. Um, I touched my forehead on a header, only a millisecond thing, but enough to burn the skin slightly. So that's what that is there. Um, and yeah, just part of the joys of being a mechanic and, and dealing with problem child cars. Anyway, the primer or the blown primer side of things. Um, listen, the, the suggestions range from um, get the primer um, depth correct, or sorry, the firing pin depth or protrusion correct, um, to change your primer, mainly change your primer. Some people run too much pressure, um, but probably the most common thing was change the primer. You need different primers. Um, uh, listen, my assumption and what I said last week when I spoke about the, this, this rifle was the pri by looking at things, when I looked at the, prim the blown primers, I could see, in some of them you could see the part of the blown, of the, of the primer um, bot or the butt of the primer further forward, it looked too deep. Um, and when I measured things and did what I, what I wanted to do, really a, the firing pin protrusion, when you take your, your bolt out and you look, you, you drop it down, you click it down to you drop it down to your firing pin protrudes, you can measure how far it's protruding from the bolt face. Um, and in this one, it was protruding 70 thou. I thought it was to do with me mixing things up and getting, because I'd swapped over 308 bolt to a, two, to, to a 223 bolt, and maybe I'd swapped over the firing pins. No, that wasn't the case. When I measured them, they both came to around 70 thou. Um, some of the comments alluded to this, certainly some of the research I've done elsewhere, and from my limited experience, it wasn't something I was aware of, but it's quite common that a ticket will have about that, about 70 thou, 65, 70 thou of, um, of firing pin protrusion. What that gives you is it makes sure it goes forward and hits properly, for sure. It makes sure it goes all the way so you're not going to get misfires and things out of not going far enough forward. Deals with, it's, it's pushing a long way forward so it's dealing with all sorts of different primers and I suspect that's why it goes that far forward. Um, but it, it also in something like this with a small um, rifle primer in the bottom of it, in quite a soft primer in the Federals, which I use all the time. Um, it means that potentially when the firing pins all the way forward and the explosion has happened in your round and it's pushing that little primer back over there, at 70 thou you're getting to the point where that, that push forward and then expansion back, you can imagine uh, how do I draw that, the, the flat face that has to protrude forward and then stretch over here to come out of it, potentially you can get to a point, especially when you're in the higher pressure levels where it could actually tear because it's stretching that metal too much and you end up with a little pop, which is what we're seeing. Now, a tougher primer would help with that. A probably a little less powder would help with that. But neither of those were actually the problem. The problem was the firing pin is going a little bit too far forward. Not a big problem to fix. Easy belt to tear down. Take the firing pin out, measure it properly, just use a stone, uh, uh, an emery stone, carefully rub, measured, rub, measured, rub, measured, rub, measured till I got to 55 thou. Um, made sure a, a primer pin is flat on the, the face of it with radiuses either side so there's nowhere for it to tear the metal as it's going in there and that fairly aggressive little thing's happening to the primer. So made that nice and round with a flat top. Got it 55 thou, put it back in, tested it, all fixed. All, no problems whatsoever, it's going to track along that for good from this point forward. So that was the problem, but the different primer that people suggested would have fixed it as well. Probably running a little less powder in there would have fixed it as well. Neither of those things that I need to do. Neither of those things were the actual cure, but they would have fixed it as well. And I suppose that's what I wanted to really do the video about, what I want to talk about. Um, is the things that can cause this. In general, what I would, the, the, the nutshell of this conversation would be if you're blowing a primer 
Although it can be too much pressure, there's almost certainly going to be way other signs before a primer let goes. There's almost certainly lots else going on before a primer goes. Um, if you are, if it's the, a different primer fixes it, then okay, that can fix it. If that works for you, fine. But most commonly, it means there's actually another mechanical issue in the rifle that's causing the problem, and a tougher primer is fixing the problem. But let's go into, I suppose, the, the, the primers to start off with. The differences are, yes, different, the primers are made out of different materials. They are, some are even steel, uh, some are brass, they're obviously generally nickel plated, that sort of stuff, but they're made out of materials that are trying to do, actually very strong, they can deal with the maximum of, of a modern cartridge and that sort of stuff. But then they're, deal, they're, they're set up with different strengths and different hardnesses and things, um, different thicknesses for different rounds and different setups. So especially in handguns, whether it's a Magnum or it's just a handgun primer and that sort of stuff, generally going to have lighter firing pins, lighter explosions, lighter everything going on, and your, your firing pin setups aren't quite as neat and tidy and organized as the big powerful spring we have in a bolt. So there are generally some issues there where they'll tend to be a little bit lighter to deal with it. Um, but all of them really are made to deal with pressure. The differences in the strength of them is to how um, easy they go off, how easy they go back. And there's different amounts of, of, of primer material in there for how hot they burn, that sort of stuff with magnum primers and hangar primers or rifle primers and that sort of stuff. And I, mean, I don't know enough to get into the nuances of all that, but they are all different. But all capable of dealing with the pressure. And like I said, in, 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 as a rule, not completely, but as a rule, they're capable of dealing with more pressure than everything else in the system before everything else in the system will start to show signs. So the, the, the things that can go wrong with primers, sometimes they're too brittle. Um, and if you combine that, if you take where you have a, a fairly round base on a primer when you, when you put it in the cartridge or when you buy it off the shelf in a, in a cartridge, fairly round base, when it goes bang, it all pushes back and it all starts to flatten out. If you get to really sharp corners on the, if you've got a bucket shape of your primer, these round corners turn into really sharp. There's a lot of load going on because you've just crimped that down to where you've got sort of a floor where that corner is. If you get into really sharp corners, you're running too much pressure. Um, maybe it's around, it's set up and everything's set up to go and do that. It's not having any other issues. And so maybe then a different primer is what you need. But generally, as a rule, sharp corners are bad. That sharp corner or getting too close to that sharp corner in a hard primer or some brittle primers can cause them to crack at that point. You'll get a blowout there. Um, changing a primer may fix that problem, but probably you're running too close to your pressure side of things. Um, so th that's that side of it. The firing pin blowing out through the firing pin is, there's a couple of, well, probably three reasons where they will blow out through the firing pin where the firing pin struck. Um, the in three most common reasons um, in, in the setup. One, very, uh, listen, the only reason that, a, that it would tear or go through is either the priming, the pri sorry, firing pin is either sharp edge, so it's got sharp corners on it, which it shouldn't have, which would cause it to tear rather than bend the metal. It's going in too far, or it's pushing in too far to where there's too much, too, too much, um, expansion too much of stretching of the metal to it ends up tearing because it's too far. Um, or the other thing that causes a problem is if you've the clearance between your firing pin and the bolt, if there's a, too much of a hole around there, you'll end up with cratering where the primer, when the primer face pushes back over here, if there's too much of a gap from that firing pin to the bolt face, you end up with cratering is the first place you'll see where there's actually some cratering going into that gap there. If it's too big a gap, you can end up with that, that double bending of the metal ends up where it'll fail at that point there, which is the case of the bolt needs repairing um, or the firing pin or something needs to be changed to get that clearance down to a low level. Um, this can also happen and creating things can also happen from incorrect head spacing. It's another problem that can cause that firing pin problem. Um, the head spacing means that when, the, when you put a round in and you close the bolt down is the head space is how much clearance there is between the round pushing, the shoulder pushing up against the front of the chamber and the bolt coming up behind. Zero head space means that it's neat, it comes up neat and tidy. If you end up with two, three set up fan, you're bumping your shoulder back and that's where you're two or three thou, that's your head space. 
you end up with 10 or 15 or 20 thou of movement where that round can move backwards and forwards. Then there's all sorts of things that can go on, in case head separation, all sorts of things can happen in that situation. But a firing, sorry, a, yes, the firing pin protrusion, um, basically prime of problems can happen out of that same, things are going forward, pushing back and bouncing around, that can cause problems as well. Um, the the next there's another thing that can actually happen which i've never seen i've only read about it but actually two lighter firing firing pin can actually cause a blown or a protrusion a, a, a perforation of the of the um of the primer with a firing pin and my assumption with that is it's going forward it's it making it go bang it's firing the firing pin back and then the firing pin's coming back again um afterwards <laughs> or you know this is all in micro milliseconds, but actually bouncing back and hitting it again because the spring is getting, or the firing pin is getting fired back when it goes bang. And the second whack is actually pushing through. Um, conceivable. Um, I, I suppose really what I'm heading with all that department is that it's a mechanical issue with the firearm. So if your bolt face isn't smooth, if it's got problems with it, which are marking or causing extra load on that, on that primer pocket, and of course, this also matters for the whole back of the round, but all those things can cause those sort of that sort of issue. What I'm leading into um, is sort of where I started, um, and really the, the the nutshell of the video is quite simple. Um, if you have um, firing or primer burst primers, um, blown primers for whatever reason you have them. You probably can fix it with the simple case of changing pre pressure, but it's not likely to be the problem unless you've got other signs. Not really the problem. It's probably compounding a different problem and causing it and showing up with something. Whether that's the firing pin protrusion, whether that's the clearance to the bolt face, whether that's a weak spring, um, a firing pin spring, but it's showing up the problem and maybe backing off the pressure will help, but it isn't really the problem. And exactly the same for changing a primer. Yes, changing to a different brand of primers, it fixes the problem. Okay, it fixes it, but it was only a problem. And especially in something like where I have a good, reputable, used a lot, federal primer, that worked really well for me and everything else, to go and say that I need to use a different primer in this rifle really means there's a problem with the rifle. Doesn't mean that wouldn't have fixed the problem. But check the mechanical side of things first. The last bit I'll go into there is, yes, there are primer problems um, you do get pardon me you do get um, sometimes the primers will be made where they're too hard so they can't bend enough once again a little less pressure probably will help them but it isn't really the problem they're just not flexible enough to deal with things um, sometimes the manufacturers get it wrong you'll tend to find out that through the fact that it won't just be your box of primers it'll be a hundred thousand of the damn things but that's possible. It's really unlikely out of, out of a reputable brand anyway. If you found a set of primers that are out of your uncle's shed from 50 years ago, well, probably don't work anyway, but okay, it's more likely to be a problem in that sort of situation. And there's some stuff that comes in, whether it's ex-military or surplus, or I've heard of some steel Russian primers that will crack because they're that brittle that actually crack when they're working in things and the, the, the whole bottom's falling off the primer. Um, there is some weird stuff happens. Sometimes a primer will fall out. This is generally a too loose a primer pocket. Um, there's something else going on with things. There's something else going on rather than the bra, rather than sorry the primer. There, there might be, like I said, too loose a primer pocket, and that's actually a brass problem. There might be um, certainly the place to look at is go through all the basics, like any mechanical thing. Go through the basics. Make sure you check things. Um, this one at where it was protruding coming forward 70 thou by taking it back to 55 thou fixed the problem. That was the problem with this rifle. It'll work perfectly with all primers now. Probably, as people suggested, could have simply answered with no mechanical work putting a different primer in it, but I wanted to use my federal primers. It's what I use, it's what I have, it's what I always have used. I don't want to put an inconsistency in there. But also I don't want the rifle to be um, picky. I don't want it to just be able to use one thing. I want to use something that works always, but I also want to put any primer in here to make sure it works. I suppose in my case, I'm really saying I want to use the federal primers, but the 55 thou is a particular thing. And I suppose what I'm talking about there, there's some people actually suggested that. This is a nice, easy place to talk about it because this is the 6BR, 6 millimeter bench rest. 
there is a lot of people that have put a lot of effort into making these things work really well. It's where the cartridge came from. So when people who do that sort of stuff tell you a size, you know, what they've found works, that's for a very specific reason. It's because it is the right size for it to be at. And if you go through with what a firing pin needs to be for a normally set up zero or up to two thou um, headspace round, then yeah, 55 thou, 50 to 60 thou, you know, as a general thing, but 51 to 55 or 51 to 54 is the precise place. So getting it precise, fix the problem, it answered my things properly. And I just wanted to go back through the fact that, yeah, listen, you may have fixed the problem in a different fashion, but if you did by going to a different primer because your rifle is selective about that, then so probably something mechanical, well, there is something mechanical in your rifle causing it. Whether it's a fuss to you or not, that doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure you understand. Anyway, guys, that's that little one on this rifle here, or on this, on the, 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 the blown primer pockets. Um, there's a little more to look at it, but there's several different ways to, um, to fix that problem. Anyway, that's my take on that one. I wanted to just let you know, um, thank you very much for checking in and um, we'll catch you next time.